Right, you know, it's it's crucial every week to come out and, uh, you know, perform how we how we should perform to our standard. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we just got to keep playing like we've been playing. The offense played well last week. We had a few mistakes. But, uh, you know, if we didn't have those mistakes, the score would have been, you know, a lot more impressive than, I guess, what it, what it showed. But, yeah, I think, you know, if we keep playing like we do, everyone does their job, you know, we'll score a lot of points and, you know, we'll hold them, we'll be fine. Be good. Yeah, it's important. Are you guys thinking about you know what do you, what do we have to do to get in that playoff? What? I mean that thought's there, but you know you can't you can't do that. You can't think about that because you know Indiana they're in our way, you know, and you don't want to overlook them because I mean it's a Big Ten football team, you know, and if someone slips up, you know, so you can't do that. You got to focus on what's important now, <laughs> which is Indiana and beating Indiana. So you know that's what we got to focus on. If you beat Indiana, you go back to the Big Ten title game. How big of a deal is that for you guys? Oh, it's huge, you know. Uh, fell short last year, and that still hurts. That was actually my first start was that game. And uh, was your fault. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I played well that game. <laughs> um, but, yeah, you know, I want to get back there and, you know, win the Big Ten. That's, that's what we can control is winning that conference. So that's what, you know, we got to do. But we got to beat Indiana first. So, yeah. What makes JT Barrett such an effective runner? Um, an effective runner. Well, first, we gotta get our job done up front, so everyone has to do their job there, and pretty much everybody, everybody on the offense has to do their job. And you know, if everyone does their job like like we've been doing recently, then you know opportunities are you know there for him to make plays. And you know, I think he has good vision. He knows where to run the ball and. You know, he's not the fastest guy, but I don't know. I don't know how they didn't catch him on Saturday. <laughs> we were watching the film. There's like seven guys around him, and JC's not running them all. That's awesome. But, uh, yeah, he's got good vision, just, you know, good reads, knows where to run the ball. Everyone's doing their job, too. Is there Honestly, anyone on this team that he could beat in a sprint? Uh, I don't think so. You? <laughs> oh, I'm faster than JT. <laughs> just, just kidding. No, but, uh, yeah, JT, you know, he's – Great guy, great quarterback. Hey, Pat, you and Tyvis and a few other guys came into this program at a time where it wasn't what it is today. Can you talk about what you remember about that um, decision to when the coaching staff was in flux a little bit? And right. Was, I mean, why was Ohio State the choice no matter what, and why did you commit during such a tough time? Right. Like I'm, like you just said, Ohio State was my choice no matter what. You know, just I'm grow, I'm grow up in Central Ohio. I'm from Columbus. Uh, always wanted to be a Buckeye, you know. Followed this program ever since I was, ever since I could remember. And you know, if you're from Ohio, but especially Central Ohio, you know, this is the place to be. And just, you know, winning was a tradition here, and I wanted to be a part of this. And no matter what was going on, I wanted to be a Buckeye. So, you know, right when I got the call, it's like I'm in. You know, I was waiting on it. Pat, honestly, were you surprised that he scored on the run? Did you watch it? Yeah, <laughs> I was like, all right, now you got to run all the way down there and run a play. And I was like, well, no, I don't. No, he scored. <laughs> That's a great feeling when you see someone, you know, or especially they make a long pass. Like, wow, like, that was easy. Now I get to go sit down. You guys uh, went sleeveless. Could you talk about oh, that yeah. decision? Uh, O-linemen, the slobs, you know, we don't wear sleeves. It's just kind of, you know, like an O-line thing. Um, I guess it shows toughness and, you know, it's kind of what we're about, so. Yeah, we weren't weren't gonna wear sleeves, you know. How cold we were the get? snow slobs, what we were saying. How cold did you get, or would you even admit being cold? Uh, it was kind of cold. The first couple of series, we were sitting on the the steel bench. The offensive line was, but then the defensive was sitting on the warm one. And when they would go out and play, we would go sit on it. After the first couple of series, we went and sat on it. But that bench was awesome. That was that was a game changer. <laughs> <laughs> did, did anyone threaten to break ranks? Was there any offensive line who was like just like? Almost gave in. No, we weren't. We weren't gonna let. Oh, come on, Taylor Decker. Come on. <laughs> no, no. Taylor no. Weather, no. No. None of us were. <laughs> yeah, they did. But whatever. Our starting five, we weren't gonna wear them. How aware are some of the, are some of the younger guys on this team that this senior class doesn't have a championship ring of, of any sort, and, and it's been yeah. a while since a four-year group's come through and left without. One. Right. You no, know, we say that sometimes. You know, some of the seniors will say that. You know, I don't have any rings. I don't have any championships. That's why, you know, that's why we came here. I'm quoting some, you know, that's why we came here to win championships, you know. And when they say that, like, 
that just kind of hits me. I was like, wow, you know, that's that's not right. That's not, you know, Ohio State. So that's what we're we're out here to do this year, every year. You know, win championships in November, compete for compete for championships. You know, that's that's what we're here to do for the seniors. You redshirted, um, it's, which is not something Urban Meyer really likes to do. It's right. a little different with offensive linemen. But how, how much do you think it benefited you and the other line? Oh, it definitely benefited me a lot. You know, uh, you know, my freshman year, just being on a scout team and going against uh, like Hankins and Simon and those guys, and just like transitioning to this level of play, where like if you mess up, it doesn't really matter because you're on a scout team. You know, I mean, it does because you're trying to give the defense a good look, but like. You know, there's not really any pressure, so you can kind of just go out there and play and kind of get acclimated to this level of football. And, you know, I got so much better doing that. And then just kind of transferred over to, you know, learning the offense after that and kind of why you're doing this. And just, you know, it all just kind of came together and it's benefiting me a lot now. And it's getting kind of late in the year. Will you guys get together Tuesday and, and watch, like, the announcement of where the rankings, you know, where, where people? Yeah, that's always uh, – the time when we're done with practice, we're up eating dinner. So it's always, it didn't, we didn't plan it that way. That's just how it is, you know. We have TVs up there. We're all eating dinner, and we'll all watch it. So that's everyone's always up there watching it. What, what are what's like your initial takeaway? Like last week, when you see the rankings come out, and you see where you guys are. You, you know, the top four get in. Right. What's your initial takeaway? Your initial reaction to it? Um, you know, only thing we can control is winning every game that we can, you know, and winning the Big Ten. So. You know, I see the rankings and, you know, it's like, you know, you want to be in the top four, but you have to control what you can control. And then the rest is really up to you know, whoever decides that, you know. So, you know, it doesn't really affect me that much just because I'm so focused on what we got to do to put ourselves in the best situation for postseason play. But, you know, it's really just got to control what we can control. Did y'all so boo when y'all saw it? Did y'all throw rolls at the screen? No. Did y'all cheer? What did? You, what was the reaction when you saw number eight last week? Just got to win. Got to keep winning. Couple more Does questions. anyone ever bother to say something <coughs> mean about an offensive lineman on Twitter? Say something mean? Yeah. I mean, because some of your teammates have been targets for Twitter barbs from. Oh, yeah. I think uh, after the Virginia Tech games, I was like, I always kind of look and see what people say. And someone said, uh, I forget what it was, that. The starting five could be a bunch of llamas or something. <laughs> I thought it was so funny, so I started tweeting back at him. And if you can go back through my Twitter, you'll see I had like I put a depth chart up, and I had like the little emojis of like I think it was like a camel or something, but it looked like a llama. And I was like, right tackle, llama, right guard, llama, center, llama. I had like the whole kind of depth chart. I thought it was funny, but yeah, that that was really been it ever since. Yeah, Coach uh, Smith. Oh, I got another one. Uh, <laughs> oh, never mind. Go ahead. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. You this. Go this is better than. No, that. go ahead. I'm good. <laughs> uh, I don't have any more comments. We uh, thought that tweet. Uh, um, no, it's something else. No, All Coach right. Smith brought it up to us because apparently Jalen was getting some stuff uh, shot at him from fans. Is that like disappointing? Like when you when you do look at it and you go, like, I, I mean, you, you had fun with it, but is it like? Yeah, because that wasn't. I mean, that wasn't really a harsh tweet, the one that they said about the offensive line. I mean, I guess it was, but not really. I had fun with it. But, yeah, some of that stuff, especially coming from, like, the highest State fans, like, that's unacceptable. Like, put yourself in his shoes and, you know, be out there in the cold trying, you know, perform at this level. Like, it's not easy. People think it's, like, easy. Like, no, we work our tails off to try and be good at what we do. And people say that stuff, like, get out of here, man. Like, what are you talking about? Pat, uh, no. uh, Last question. Urban Meyer said he's he's had a couple of Heisman candidates. Obviously, uh, Tim Tebow won it. <clears throat> he knows what they're about. He is basically endorsing a JT as a Heisman candidate anyway. Do you feel like you are playing with a special player now that maybe you didn't feel that way six, eight, ten weeks ago? I mean, what has he proven to you, I guess, over ten weeks? Definitely just, you know, we, we got a great quarterback in the backfield. And, uh, you know, it's awesome listening to him talk, you know, before the games. Like I said before, like what he says before games is just, it's awesome, you know, just, you know, like everyone will say some raw, raw stuff before mm -hmm. games, try to get hyped, but his is like, it's real, you know, it's like from the heart, you know, he really means it. And, you know, we, yeah, he's, like you said, he's a special guy back there. Um, and when everyone does their job, it allows him to, you know, make his plays that he's been making, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah, like, JT is awesome and we love JT.
What, what's something he said that still resonates with you? What's a, a phrase or a comment he made before a game that sticks with you? Um, I'm probably going to just think of something off the top of my head. He didn't call you a llama, did he? No. <laughs> For a couple of weeks, we were, they were kind of messing around with that. Everybody kind of was. <laughs> where the llamas at? Yeah. No, where the slobs, though.